ultimately you will make better business decisions if you've got the voice of the of the consumer in your head ringing in your ears about what they think what they care about what is important to them and and if you listen to the to the customer you'll invariably make better business decisions Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to White Label Advice. I am here today um, with our friends from Bizarre Voice. We're here with Sean Lynn with Bizarre Voice. Hello, Sean. Hey, Brooke. Hey. <laughs> and then we're also here with our VP of Partnerships, Scott, Scott Benedict. And so thank you guys for being here. Mm -hmm. And today we want to talk about, again, reviews mm -hmm. and how you can take your reviews and use them to help inform you on what's going on, how your product is, and how you can also use that um, to inform how you would um, update your content on your uh, product detail page. Mm -hmm. And so, Sean, um, you know, we already know that reviews help with shopper decisions, but how can you use reviews to better your products? You think of reviews, think of uh, reviews as a dynamic focus group, it, an always on dynamic focus group. It's, it's your constant uh, communication and channel to customers, letting you know what their experience is like with your products. Whether it be good, whether it be bad, whether it be somewhere in the middle, if they have questions, you can help answer those questions. Uh, but you can really take this valuable data, this voice of your customer to let you know, you know, is this product the right fit? Is it the right, you know, optimal color? Does it have the right sunscreen protection? They're letting you know. Um, so I think it's, it's immensely valuable for any brand to understand their customer experience. So think of it as an always on focus group. There you go. You have anything to add, Scott? Well, uh, here, here's one thing that that really builds on on Sean's point. One of the things that I've always admired about Bizarre Voice is their commitment to review authenticity. In other words, making sure that the the voice of the consumer that comes through their platform is in fact a an actual consumer, not a bot, not somebody in a third world country paid to do the reviews. They have a very stringent process to sh assure that their ratings and reviews and the user generated content that appears on any of their clients' platforms, including walmart.com and samsclub.com, that that's authentic. And because it is authentic, because they go to the steps that they, that they do to make sure uh, that it's credible uh, feedback, the value, the power of that information is so incredibly beneficial to to the buyer, to the to the retailer, and to the brand uh, whose product is being depicted. One of the things I can recall uh, from my past dealings with Bizarre Voice is stories of an item where a buyer had made the decision to try and hit a, a, a new lower price point, so it had made some changes, alterations to the product, and through user-generated content, that buyer and the brand both got feedback that, hey, the, the, the quality you know was not as good as it used to be, the returns were going up, and consumers gave that both the buyer and the brand a lot of great feedback on, hey, this, uh, thanks for the lower price, but it's it's damaged the performance of, the, of this item. It doesn't last as long, doesn't work as, as well for me. And so that, that value that's, that's then harvested from that feedback, it's, I mean, Sean was talking about it earlier. We, you'd have to run a whole lot of focus groups, get a mm -hmm. whole lot of people in a room, and you don't know if you'd have a good cross-section of the population or not. Well, part of, part of the value of what Bizarre Voice does is you get a cross section of people who have actually owned and lived with that product and have a credible perspective on how it works. And man, that is so incredibly valuable to a brand and yeah. to a retailer that I just, I don't think you can uh, overstate the, the, the value of that. Yeah, that is one of those things, you know, um, is that, you know, just kind of like what what gets a shopper fi fired up and, and definitely like any any changes to like a tried and true product. And we, we even had someone like that. Um, one of our product pages that we were we were doing, um, they 
one of the they they changed like a supplement to be gluten free mm -hmm. and it changed the, the the texture and the and the taste and and uh, you could see it in the reviews like they just the the people that 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 loved that product they were not <laughs> they didn't care that it was it was gluten free that was not they're like but it's gluten free we can you, more people can have it and they just didn't even care so is that kind of um you know kind of stuff that you guys have seen across the board sean just kind of like how you know a product change or just how and you know maybe like you know a new product how you know just that it, it, is that kind of how um shoppers respond and like what what gets them really fired up yeah i i agree with that example i i agree that um you know personally i i've also shared uh feedback to some brands that had changed their formula for example a sunscreen that i always relig religiously used they changed the formula i was unhappy i felt inclined to tell the brands about how unhappy I was. So I, I think it's, it's, uh, it's a way for a brand also to, I mean, in addition to hearing the consumer's experience, but it's also an opportunity for the brand to communicate with that user who's not happy and, you know, maintain some level of communication, some level of trust with that um, consumer to say, hey, you know, I, I hear you that you're not happy, um, you know, maybe some other products might fit that we have might fit better or it's just an opportunity to engage with an unhappy customer so it's yeah. it's um very important yeah you know sean one of the things that was interesting in in my past experience working with bizarre voice was whether it was the buyer or the brand in both cases they were frightened of well what if we get a bad review Mm -hmm. you know, oh my goodness or, or in a few cases it's scott you've got to take that review down it's negative and i just, <laughs> just used to laugh and say if a customer has a bad experience with your item and they want to tell you don't you want to listen don't you want to hear that feedback or would you like them to just tell all their friends and neighbors about their bad experience and not tell you so that you can address either the issue with that product or with its performance or its 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 makeup in some way that you can improve the product. I mean, that is just in such incredibly valuable feedback that you can apply both as a retailer and as, as a brand owner that why wouldn't you want that? Now, one of the other things, and that's that's a part of what I think is a really valuable about our partnership, is statistically you've got a better chance of getting a higher rating on a product the more reviews you have. In other words, if you if you get more consumers to give you their feedback, generally speaking, unless there's a real issue with the product, which again you'd want to know about, generally ratings go up the more reviews that you get and so the 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 ability to drive more reviews through this this collaboration and through this uh, partnership uh, if you're a brand owner is incredibly valuable because more reviews likely results in a higher rating unless you've got a problem with the product and again you want to know that you want to hear that so that you can take an action Mm -hmm. uh, and improve the product instead of just letting consumers stew yeah. and, <laughs> and talk about it in chat rooms or with their friends or just complaining and you don't know about it as the brand owner, right? You yeah. want to know that information so that you can take an action. So Yeah, so what you're saying is you can learn more from the negative reviews. Is that kind of, you know, brands can probably learn more from their negative reviews well, than, than from their positive they, reviews? They can learn from both because if there's something that a, a, a consumer really likes about the product and you're contemplating changing it, the power of those reviews is, oh, we may not want to change that because uh, what we're learning from the Bizarre Voice platform is that's one of the reasons why a consumer buys that item. Mm -hmm. So let's not change that. Let's let's do something else with it. But man, don't don't mess <laughs> don't mess with that, right? <laughs> yep. Uh, Sean, do you have anything to add? Yeah, I was just thinking about you know old or just focus groups. I was just thinking about how. Uh, brands and retailers, perhaps, uh, used to collect um, information about products. And I, my mind just kept thinking about, you know, a room full of people and a moderator asking questions about, you know, whether 
whether or not they like the product and a whole list of questions that they might have. And then I'm thinking about what we're talking about and you're, you know, the brand and the retailers are getting live real time feedback from people that actually purchase the product. It's night and day or it's just, it's so powerful. It's, it's real time information as opposed to a focus group that, um, that, you know, can go stale very quickly. (laughs) <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. And how can you can take how can you use reviews to improve a PDP? Like what do you know? How do you use the reviews to actually improve the content? Maybe, you, you know, they have questions and you're trying to explain something. So how how can you improve content by using reviews? I, I think one of the um, ways of, of, of accomplishing that is as you've collected, a, you know, a large sample set of reviews. I think one of the ways that I love seeing reviews um, on a PDP is, you know, what, which reviews are getting the most interaction, which reviews are people finding the most, um, beneficial when they read it and then highlight that, you know, just surface that, um, at, to the you know, top section, make it easy for people to find. And at the same time, I also want to see what are, which review, uh, which negative review is also being read the most. I think just having you know a comparison um, quickly that I can glance over, as opposed to you know reading through ten reviews, um, is really a powerful way to highlight and utilize your re- review content. That's really good. How about you, Scott? Have anything to add? Well, I, I think what's what's kind of interesting uh, about this is. You know, one of the benefits of our SKU Ninja platform for our clients is the ability to, to see what shoppers are searching for, what's an important element, what's an important uh, keyword uh, that pulls them towards one product or another. Well, our platform helps identify what are the keywords associated with a particular product, but there's... Yeah. There's, there's content within ratings reviews that I think is complementary to what our uh, platform provides our, our clients, that those two things working together just make the brand owner just that more knowledgeable about the voice of the consumer and what are they searching for and, and, and what is most important to them. And ultimately, you will make better business decisions if you've got the voice of the, of the consumer in your head ringing in your ears about what they think, what they care about, what is important to them. And, and if you listen to the, to the customer, you'll invariably make better business decisions and drive better results on Walmart.com uh, and Sam's Club com so how, how how would you not want to take advantage of that right yeah for sure um and another one one a question is you know can um you know can reviews help build on your brand story like can you take customer feedback and then actually turn that into something that you know helps expand your brand and helps you know get, kind of just tell that story yeah. better i I'll, I'll say this one of the things i've seen a lot of innovative retailers do is incorporate review content into marketing materials, whether it's uh, uh, an ad uh, placed uh, digitally, a print ad, a social media post. Uh, it, it, the voice of the consumer can be used in addition to on the on the item detail page in a lot of other different marketing uh, media. And, and so it just, it, it, it multiplies the value of that feedback uh, to help tell your brand story uh, in ways that I, I think still a lot of brand owners don't know. And that message uh, is not universally understood, but there's a lot of innovative brands who have figured that out. And I think about our clients and the people who work with us at White Spider, and I just, I, I know that they can harvest a lot of additional value uh, out of that feedback beyond the item page into other aspects of their of their, their marketing campaigns. Yeah, Sean, do you, do you have anything to add? Yeah, um, I, 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 I think, you know, the, the stars, you know, four stars, four and a half star average, I think it, it's so, it's such a powerful, um, you know, asset to to be able to say that, hey, you know, my products have earned, you know, four, four and a half star average ratings. I I think that I've seen brands utilize that um, asset that they've developed 
with through through their uh, relationships with their customers, and it, it gets associated with their brand name. So, I think it's it's a great story to be for brands to be able to tell to the market. I think I've seen you know user generated content and the star ratings be incorporated in, in, into media into uh, assets in addition to the PDP page. It, it's utilized in email communications. It's it's utilized in their uh, different types of you know yeah, media outlet um, type advertising. So it, it can be, it's very closely tied to a, a brand's persona. That's, yeah, that's, that's that's really really good good advice. And just for our last question, because we ha- we haven't really had a chance to talk about it in this podcast too much, but how do you get more reviews? So if you are you know you you, you have a product, you really want you know those that hundred reviews, um, how do you go about getting more? I'm glad you asked. There's a whole section of Bizarre Voice known as content acquisition services. And uh, at a high level, we, we help brands generate content because as we all know, the, the value of content to help driving conversion and building that trust with your consumer base is, is so is so important. So again, as I mentioned in a different podcast, we do have a influencer community of over 6 million avid uh, writers of product reviews that we can leverage. We can send sampling out to this community. They'll they'll be happy to write reviews about the product and their experience, both from a text point of view. They'll, we can also uh, add imagery, video, um, and other powerful media components to to help tell that story about your product. Shauna, I really want you to maybe dive a little deeper on that sampling program because I think that program is so powerful, particularly if you're a brand who's managing the beginning of the life cycle of a new product. And the product hasn't been out long enough to generate a lot of reviews on its own, but I think you've got such a cool program uh, to, to, to drive sampling. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you know as new product launches, like one of the big challenges is building that trust and getting that product to for for users to believe in that product. How do you accomplish that? Well, we have different methods. One one method that I, I'm thinking about right now is what's known as our Vox Box, and the reason why I'm thinking about Vox Box in particular with with a new product launch is that you you have an opportunity to create a relationship with um, a new customer uh, and you want to put your best foot forward. So with our VoxBox program, we're able to customize uh, the, the experience any way that you want to. From the packaging of the box to the opening of the box, everything inside can be um, you know created in, in a way that portrays your brand in the best light possible so that the receiver of that, when they receive it, they'll immediately have an impression of your brand, what, you know, and, and you'll, you'll create that story with, with your consumer that you're sending that box to. So it, it's a great way uh, to develop a good brand story. That's awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for being here. And yeah. yay. <laughs> yay. More sound effects. Just just, just because cause I love them. Um, but yes, thank you guys for being here. And this was a great podcast. And I hope we do more of these next time. All awesome. Right? Bye. Thank you.